here to discuss. Congressman Lee Zeldin, former congressman and a former candidate for governor in New York. Sir, good to have you with us. It's good to be with you, Vince. It's, it's uh, unfortunately not surprising, but awful to see this happen once again in our nation's capital, sir. Yeah, where's the police? Why is it not being stopped? And there's a line with free speech that when it's clearly crossed and laws are being broken, then law enforcement should be getting involved. Uh, and, you know, there's some people saying, well, it's, you know, it's protected free speech to burn a flag. The flag was taking, taken down off of a flagpole in front of Union Station. That's not their flag to burn. Why is nobody talking about that? Right. What about the property that's there that they are spray painting, that they are vandalizing uh, with their message, with their, that they're painting over? What about those crimes? And why not just crack down on it on the spot instead? The, the, these pro-Hamas protesters are given all of this space uh, to be able to make their comments, which if it was just comments, much of what they say would be protected free speech. But when the line's crossed, whether we're talking about in front of Union Station or nation's capital, or it's happening on a college campus where, you know, as part of the speech, you also have Jewish students unable to get to a library because they're Jewish when studying for the finals, or unable to get from dorm to classroom without being physically confronted when the lines get crossed and force the law for sure and i the media to the extent that they've paid attention to any of this or given it any airtime uh they've tried to downplay the relationship to hamas that these people have in terms of their sympathies but they're paint they're spray painting it directly on america's monuments right there in union uh right there in front of union station they're writing hamas is coming they're not being subtle about this congressman you you start flipping the narrative, it's conservatives out there instead, uh, and they're, they're out there with anti-Democratic uh, Party, anti-Joe Biden, anti-Kamala Harris rhetoric. Uh, then all of a sudden, you know, there's a, not just a call uh, for, the law, for law enforcement to get involved and for prosecutors to prosecute every single Republican uh, anywhere in America, whether you belong to a local town board or you're running for president of the United States, everyone not only needs to immediately issue their statement condemning it, um, but th their allegations made as if they're, they're the ones doing the graffiti themselves. And w too often we've seen this double standard and this hypocrisy at play where it's filtered down to the point where average everyday Americans now see through it. Uh, and, and we can't be operating with that double standard. And, and in this particular case, you have Jewish students who, uh, and Jewish Americans and Jewish professors yeah. and more. And in a case of folks with you know, the pro-Hamas, death to America, burning uh, American flags and yelling Allahu Akbar, I mean, you're talking about a national security concern when that free speech line gets crossed. Definitely. Can you talk a little bit about the, um, the what's going on with the Democrats? It, it, there's a a meaningful part of their party that is pretty openly anti-Semitic. And uh, and it's even trickling out into affecting whether or not Kamala Harris chooses a Jewish running mate, if you can believe that. Take a listen to this. This is on CNN this week. John King saying that uh, Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro being Jewish may be a risk for their for that party. Pennsylvania's Governor Josh Shapiro is being discussed as one of Harris's potential running mates. He also endorsed her tonight. In your view, what are the pros and cons for putting him on the ticket? Uh, well, he's certainly under consideration. I know that from key Harris allies. He's a first-term governor. He's Jewish. There could be some risks in putting him on the ticket, but certainly some of our voters here in Pennsylvania said, hey, we like Governor Shapiro. I'll give him a look. Yeah, and meanwhile, Newsweek with a headline today, Josh Shapiro could help Kamala Harris win Jewish voters, comma, but is a big risk. What's going on here? Well, and they're spitting truth. This isn't some type of one-off observation somebody's making, and, you know, there's a counter-argument to be made a lot of how the Biden administration has uh, and, and Kamala Harris now are approaching what's going on between Israel and Gaza and what's happening here with the protest is geared towards domestic politics and the election coming up, the impacts on Michigan, and the consequences of what was a massive number of non-committed voters during the Michigan Democratic primary. I've campaigned multiple times in and around Detroit for President Trump over the last few months. And while Rashida Tlaib and a lot of people in Dearborn who agree with her are, are one way with their 
anti-Semitism and, as it relates to the Israel-Hamas war, refusing to condemn Hamas and pursuing a one-state solution where the Jewish state of Israel isn't even the Jewish state of Israel anymore. On the, the, the counterweight is that in the Detroit suburbs, you have a whole bunch of longtime Democrat voters, including a lot of Jewish Democrats, who have said enough is enough. And that has been their breaking point where, for the first time, they're saying, I, I was a Clinton-Biden voter who, uh, who is now going to vote for President Trump. Or they're at least saying that they're considering it, uh, or they're just not as enthusiastic about their support uh, for Biden and Harris. And Harris is actually further to the left than Biden was. Uh, so th that's a real issue for them. It shouldn't be. What they should do is just make their calls as to what they say and what their positions are based off of what is right and wrong, what they know on a moral compass, as opposed to what a pollster is telling them, hey, we have an issue in Michigan. Yeah, it's it's pretty wild. And and I was just saying earlier, and now they've really backed themselves into a corner because they're sort of damned if they do, damned if they don't. Kamala Harris waited 24 hours to condemn uh, the anti-Semitism, anti-American, anti, you know, burning the American flag, destruction out in front of Union Station. She did release a statement today, uh, which also did condemn Hamas. Uh, but this strikes me as, well, this is going to create new problems for her among her base, which uh, is unfortunately sympathetic to that terrorist organization. Well, what the way that, that she and Biden are playing their politics on this is that when they do feel compelled to say something that sends a message to the Jewish community, or at least the the non-Hamas uh, sympathizer community, they do stuff simultaneously that ends up a dog whistling, gaslighting that pro-Hamas community that is out there. So what what I was predicting as soon as Kamala Harris put her statement out, simultaneously you have uh, Bibi Netanyahu walking into the White House to sit down with Joe Biden is that the comms that would be coming out of the White House would be very much focused on pushing Netanyahu to accept a ceasefire as if you know, that is what is preventing uh, there to be an end to the conflict, that all Netanyahu has to do is say, okay, I'm good, right. and then, then there's peace and all the hostages are released. So uh, Kamala Harris is about to sit down with Bibi, and I, I would say what is most likely to, to leak out of there is about how Kamala Harris behind the scenes is being strong in pushing Bibi Netanyahu to try to counterbalance her statement about what happened outside of Union Station. Would, do you expect any word on uh, efforts to retrieve American hostages from Gaza? Uh, if, uh, if, if she can avoid it, I don't believe so. Uh, you know, we'll we'll see. I mean, it, there's there's a possibility that 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 the calculation is that they have to make a reference to it, uh, and it's. And, and, but I would say that with what we're watching, and it's really been the mo now for many months, yeah. is that whenever you see them say anything uh, that is right with regards to what we're talking about here on the line right now, they find a way in the same news cycle to also push out messaging that is wink-wink to uh, their base of the Rashida Tlaibs of the world. It's, it's so crazy. Um, also, President Trump set to meet with uh, Benjamin Netanyahu tomorrow uh, at, down in Mar-a-Lago. Um, do you think, how, how important are these two meetings, both his meeting with the Biden White House and then uh, with President Trump? Uh, well, I think it's very important. I mean, there's multiple instruments of national power, and if you want to end the conflict favorably between Israel and Gaza, it's not all just the military instrument of national power. In the, right. in the United States military, it's the principle of dime, diplomacy, information, military, economics. Uh, well, there's a lot to the Israel-Hamas conflict uh, than just the military action. And, and for Bibi to be in the United States, getting to speak before a joint session of Congress, being in the White House, and being able to sit down with the next president, Donald Trump, uh, all allow him to get his message out, to set the record straight between fact and fiction, and to be strong on the international stage, and to help build more support amongst the world's leaders. Yeah, it's going to be fascinating to see what happens. I'm, I'm also looking forward to Do you think the possibility of Trump's election in November, should that occur Will that change any of the dynamics in, on the ground there uh, in Israel, in Gaza? 
Uh, for sure. Uh, as we saw during four years of Donald Trump in the White House, no new conflicts were started. There was no Israel-Hamas conflict. There was no Ukraine, uh, you know, Russia invasion in Ukraine. It happened during Obama, and then it happened again under Biden. Instead, the exact opposite was happening. And I would imagine President Trump would look to pick up right where he left off. Yeah, yeah, um, and, and try and, and figure out a way to solve all of this really quickly. Uh, it'd be good if he did. And before we let you go, um, uh, we're talking to Lee Zeldin, former congressman, former uh, gubernatorial candidate in New York. Uh, can I get your reaction to the assassination attempt on President Trump? I, you know, you've you've of course been uh, you know no stranger to politics and no stranger to the rough and tumble world of it too. I mean, you had quite famously somebody tried to attack you on a campaign stage. Um, what were you thinking when you saw President Trump shot just a few weekends ago now? First, it was whether or not he was safe. Then it was about uh, my thought was about the safety of everyone else who was there. That was uh, instantly coming to mind. Then I was uh, wondering, well, who or how many are responsible? And then as you learn the facts of uh, President Trump's safety with regards to the, the victims, and then there was a shooter and the shooter was stopped, and you start learning more about the warnings and and the perimeter and more it's just it leads to so many questions and the questions are obvious regardless of whether you're a member of congress or or you're just sitting down in any barber's chair anywhere in this country i would like to see more uh, curiosity coming out of this white house i would like to see leadership there you know either firing or calling for resignation as opposed to putting a finger up in the air somebody should ask kamala harris what questions do you have uh, because right now the American public have a lot of unanswered questions, and if yes. they think only the Secret Service uh, director resigning is the end of this, the end of this, then they have another thing coming because a lot of questions are still getting asked, and Americans are not going to stop demanding answers. So we're, you still have Americans demanding answers from the Kennedy assassination, yes. but we don't want to have to wait 40 years. We don't want to have to wait four months. But their lack of curiosity in the White House suggests to me they don't think that they're unsafe. They think they're well protected by the Secret Service. Uh, it, well, the, the fact is that they were denying Bobby Kennedy Jr. Uh, resources. Uh, clearly, President Trump's campaign was re requesting resources that yep. were getting denied. Yep. Uh, it is important that we are protecting our presidential candidates and that these scores, yes, are settled at the ballot box. Amen. All right. Lee Zeldin, good to talk to you, sir. Great to have you on the program today. 